Hello and welcome to another historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green Scry deck featuring Galadriel as our commander, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three legendary elf noble, saying whenever the ring tempts us, if we chose a creature other than Galadriel to be our ring bear, we get to Scry 3, but we can also get value from Galadriel without the ring bear mechanic, because whenever we scry at any point, we may reveal the top card of our library, and if a land card is revealed, we can put it straight onto the battlefield tapped. So we want to play Galadriel, alongside plenty of scry effects, and then of course we'll also have plenty of synergy with landfall cards, since we'll be putting a lot of lands on the battlefield, triggering landfall multiple times in the same turn. So I've split up the deck into a few different categories, and the broad strokes are, we've got some mana acceleration, ways to ramp, typically ways to put additional lands onto the battlefield as well to synergize with the landfall, couple early mana elves of course to maybe set up a turn 2 Galadriel, and then we've got plenty of landfall payoffs, that's this next category, with ways to generate tokens, like from Zendikar's Royal. We've got uh, Scute Swarm, which has a few interesting combos in this deck, as you saw from the intro. And ways to make more mana with Cobra, Nissa, and the Tireless Provisioner. Then we also have a category of cards that let us tempt the ring, which of course will still let us scry 3 with Galadriel, so that can be pretty nice. And then we've got a few more scry payoffs in this category here as well, mostly cards from the Lord of the Rings. Then we've got a few cards that help us play lands of the top, which is also useful if we can take a look at the top card of our library at any time with some of these cards like Augur of Autumn, Course of Crufix, or Oracle of Moldaya. We have a lot more information to work with since we get to see if there's a land on top of our deck and whether or not we would like to scry to put that land directly onto the battlefield. We've got a few more draw effects here too, which can also help us maybe get rid of some non-land cards from the top of our deck so we can keep scrying more lands onto the battlefield. The X cards, of course, are also quite useful alongside Galactic Andrail, since we'll end up making a lot of mana and eventually we need a mana sink to put all that mana to use. And then we've got a huge category here, which are all cards that help us scry to help put more and more lands onto the battlefield until we amass enough lands to take over the game. And then the final category are just a few staples of pretty much any blue-green deck like Reverse Rebuke and Time Warp, which are probably pretty used to seeing by now. Then the mana base also has a few interesting cards to point out. Lots of lands that scry when they enter the battlefield, which are incredibly useful since they potentially let us put even more lands onto the battlefield. So we've got the Grey Havens, Jalfren void, there's Crystal Grotto which also scries when it enters, and a few lands with activated abilities to scry, like Castle Ventress and Rivendell. And then I've got a few more utility lands that I'll go over in more detail in just a second. But yeah, these are the broad strokes of our Galadriel deck. For those that want a more detailed breakdown, we'll start with our Mana Acceleration, where we've got Delighted Halfling, Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves. Then we've got Explore and Grow Spiral to play an extra land to draw card. And then I'm only playing Arcane Signet as a 2-mana ramp artifact since we can immediately tap it for mana. And then Cultivate, another staple of any green deck. And then Uro is also excellent here since we have a lot of fetch lands as well, since the fetch lands combine with all the landfall creatures to enable those twice. And then we have more cards in Graveyard to escape Uro, to put more lands in play, draw more cards and gain more life. And then Nissan is also awesome if we're putting a lot of lands on the battlefield, can double the mana produced by our forests. Then we get to the Landfall category, where we mentioned Lotus Cobra making a mana with Landfall. Nissan does the same, but can also potentially find more Elves. And we've got a few Elves and even Elementals that Nissa can find, Ancient Green Warden, one of our Curve Toppers. And then there's Skewed Swarm, which can also lead to some shenanigans alongside Galadriel and other Scry effects. And we've got Tireless Provisioner, typically making treasure tokens with Landfall, but could also make food tokens to gain life if needed. Tireless Tracker makes a clue token to potentially draw an extra card, so that's another great mana sink. Zenekar's Royal makes a 2-2 elemental token, Tatiova gains a life and draws a card, and then Ancient Green Warden will double our landfall triggers and also lets us replay lands from the graveyard, so also has a good synergy with all the fetch lands. And then we've got a category where the ring tempts us and other scry synergies. Birthday Escape draws a card and then the ring tempts us. Pretty simple. Typically one awaits to play it until after we have Galadriel in play alongside another creature that can become our ring bearer. Good Council's Deliberation draws a card, and then if we end up scrying while it's in the graveyard and control an island, we get to draw an extra card. A Glorious Gale, a counterspell for creatures, and if it's countering a legendary, the ring tempts us. There's R1 at 2 mana, getting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on a creature we control whenever we scry, so that can also add up very quickly. And then Elrond gets to scry 1 whenever it or another creature enters a battlefield under our control, and if it's the second time it resolves, we can have the ring tempt us, which can result in even more scry with Galadriel. And of course if we get Elrond alongside Galadriel and a Skewed Swarm in play, shenanigans will definitely ensue. Then the envelope has the ring tempt us when it enters, can make a mana. 
Got Elrond at 4 mana, giving us extra plus 1 counters whenever we scry, and can also let us draw a card if the opponent tries to take out our creatures with plus 1 counters. And then the horses can bounce two creatures, scry 1, and the ring tempts us, so with Galadriel we get to scry 1 and then potentially scry 3 as well, so we can put multiple lands on the battlefield. Then we've got our card draw effects, where we've got the best cherry, where if we pay a green mana when we cast a creature spell, we get to draw a card, and we also get to scry one on upkeep every turn, so excellent alongside Galadriel. Got Augur of Autumn playing lands and eventually creatures of the top. Having two power alongside a three-powered commander means we only need one more creature to round out our coven to start uh, playing creatures of the top as well. Then, of course, our Krufix can gain life with landfall while playing lands of the top. Oracle of Moldiah lets us play an extra land of the top as well. The One Ring can also be activated to draw extra cards turn after turn. We've got Awaken the Woods, which is awesome alongside all the other landfall cards, since we can spend a bunch of mana on the X, make a bunch of 1-1 one, one dried tokens that are also lands, so every one of those tokens will enable landfall. And then we've got Funnel of Devastation, one of our finishers of choice. If we cast it for X equals 10, get to search up a creature and give the team plus X plus X and haste until end of turn, so that can kill the opponent out of nowhere. And Hydroid Crisis can present a very large creature while drawing cards and gaining life. Then we've got a lot of Scry effects, including Fading Hope, which can also just be a nice one mana interactive spell. Opt can Scry one draw card. Then a Joint Exploration can be another way of ramping, similar to Growth Spiral. Got Omen of the Sea, which we can scry with multiple times after sacrificing it. Got Scour All Possibilities, scry 2 and then draw a card and can be flashed back. And then it's always important that if we scry 2, we put a land second from the top, since we'll first end up drawing, and then trigger Galadriel's ability, so we want to make sure there's a land on top of our deck after we're finished drawing. We've got the Sigil Starfish, Patrick can tap to scry one, also very fun in this deck. And then a Sylvan Anthem only applies to our green creatures, but that's most of the creatures in this deck, giving them plus one plus one, and whenever a green creature enters we get to scry one as well. We've got Maze Mind Tomb and Treasure Map as artifacts that can scry several times. We've got Jace Mirror Mage, which can also be kicked, but can also scry one with the plus one ability and potentially draw extra cards. Also helpful alongside all these effects to let us take a look at the top card of our library, since we have more information to work with. Then there's Cosmina, which can also scry one repeatedly. We've got Behold the Multiverse, can first exile it for two mana and then cast it for two mana to scry to draw two. And then Inscription of Insight is especially powerful if we get to kick it and choose every mode, where we get to bounce two creatures, scry two and draw two, and make a large illusion token. Then we've got the Jason Raveler, can also bounce creatures or scry one and draw. The Temporal Anchor is awesome if we get it going, as we can scry all cards to the bottom and still be able to cast them from exile with the Anchor. Multiple Choice is also quite flexible, can cast it for X equals 1 to just scry one draw, but if we can sink more mana into it, we can maybe bounce a creature, make an elemental, and still scry one and draw. And then a Nissan Steward of Elements, another cheap Planeswalker potentially that lets us scry two with a plus two ability, but can also be a finisher making some of our lands into 5-5 five five elementals with flying until end of turn. And then we've got some more Historic Brawl staples. Wash Awake can counter the opponent's commander for just one mana. There's Counterspell at two mana. Reclamation Stage to blow up artifacts or enchantments. We've got Time Warp to take an extra turn. And a Reverse Rebuke to bounce all the opponent's stuff back except for their lanes. Now I'm not playing the Great Henge since our creature count is relatively low, so it's not going to be the most consistent card draw engine, and the size of our creatures is also on the smaller side, so we don't get as much of a discount for the Great Henge. Otherwise could be an excellent addition as well. And then the mana base has quite a few fetch lands, like I mentioned, to synergize with all the landfall cards. I'm playing all five of the Streets of New Capenna fetch lands, so even if they only have one overlapping color with blue and green, they're still worth it to enable landfall twice and to search up one of our basics and gain a life. Then all the scry lands that I highlighted earlier are great too. I've got Fabled Passage as one of the better fetch lands that can enter untapped at least. And then a few creature lands as well with Lair of the Hydra and Hall of the Storm Giants, since we tend to put a lot of lands on the battlefield, so eventually we need to turn those lands into a way to close out the game as well. And then more ways to scry here with Castle and Rivendell. Soaring City can bounce something, and Boseju can also blow up artifacts or enchantments if we channel it. And then a 10 of each basic land, since we need to have plenty of lands to search up with all the fetch lands. And then some more blue-green dual lands for mana fixing. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Gandalf the White. Doubling effects from artifacts and other legendary permanents entering. And our hand seems promising. Turn 1 Elf is difficult to turn down, even though we're missing blue mana. With the treasure map we can scry into one. 
So play map and pass. And I might put an upkeep stop to scry again if we fail to find an island. Alright, Sanctum works. So we can now play Galadriel and then still scry with map. And then we're going to be looking for another blue source to play Jace. And I guess I should just do this now. Okay, Fabled Passage works. Put that on the battlefield. And then next turn we can transform Treasure Map. Might start by fetching with Passage. Even though I could find a Landfall creature. Otherwise I'm gonna end up shuffling stuff back into the deck that I don't want to draw. And then now I can scry, still before my draw step. And an Uro, I think I bought him since we might be able to hit a land with Galadriel. Nice. Take our actual draw step, another land. So we're ramping nicely, could even play the Temporal Anchor here, which may be better than Jace. Sure. Play Anchor. And hit for three. Opponent's got two lands in play. <laughs> We've got uh, seven already. So let's make it count. Depopulate. Fair enough. Could Fading Hope one of my creatures. But at that point I may as well just replay Galadriel. And this way we also get to draw by controlling a multicolored creature. So here we always want to scry to the bottom. So we get to cast those for free. And then I can play Anthem, replay Galadriel. And then Rivendell will enter untapped. And then I can still play Augur of Autumn as well. Okay, not a bad turn. Get this cry again. Bottom the horses. Which I wouldn't be able to play right now. Uh, Tyrell's Tracker's next. So that's another nice payoff. Glass Cascade's gonna go after Augur. Nope, still going for Galadriel. That's fine. We've got to mana to replay it. Although I might get a Jason Ravel of Secrets down as well. Okay, so bottom bottom. I can play Tireless Tracker. Counter spell on top. Okay, so let's say we play Tracker. Scry, keep that on top. Play lands, make a clue token so I can draw into my counter spell if I'd like and still cast it. And uh, Augur can attack for three. Yeah, I guess we'll just draw into Counterspell now. Okay, and then pass it back. Can't scry with Rivendell since we don't have a legendary creature. Might stone seems worth countering. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. This was an amazing start. Despite all the removal on Galadriel, we got to ramp out a ton of extra lanes onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Samwise, and uh, our hand seems pretty decent. Turn 1 Elf. Can't quite set up turn 2 Galadriel, although turn 2 Treasure Map should be awesome. Although I guess our opponent did just play Haywire Might to blow up artifacts. Oh, 
And there's Samwise. And can wait on Rivendell until after we play one of our legendaries. Could also just uh, foretell Behold the Multiverse, play Storefront. And get an island. And then at the very least I can play Galadriel into Grotto to scry, or we can start with Elrond. Boromir's next. So, how about we just go Forest into Elrond, and then next turn Galadriel, Grotto, and then I can maybe Behold as well. I guess I'll be missing the blue mana for it, unless I play Rivendell. So then I wouldn't get to play Grotto. And for now, 4-4 helps us block pretty well. Provisioner. Can make some uh, treasure tokens. Okay, so Galadriel... Plus Rivendell and then Behold. Seems fine. Can Behold at instant speed for what it's worth. So for now both decks are kind of staring at each other. War of the Last Alliance is a good one. Bone can find two legendaries and eventually give the team double strike. So that's going to hurt. Mondrak to double the tokens. Tireless Tracker and Best Cherry. Tracker isn't bad. Don't think Best Cherry is good enough when they have a Haywire Might in play. And then hope to reveal a land. Awesome, and we get to scry again. And Elrond, Lord of Rivendell, is also quite good here, but it's not a land. I think I should still keep it. And then and now I get to play Elrond into Tracker into a land. And get maximum value. Keep line on top. Play Tracker. And then Grotto lets us cry as well. Get to make a Ring Bear. Nissa is not land. Even though it is tempting, I think I should still keep hitting land drops. And then Tracker can be our Ring Bear. And then we want to scry before revealing, so we can keep land on top. Distribute some more counters. Okay, so counter spell I should keep, and then Omen of the Sea I guess is fine too. Although we'll probably be digging for lands afterwards. Final of Devastation could also get a Skewed Swarm here if we just cast it for X equals 3, if we want to try and break the game. Although, maybe we want to actually close out the game with it this time. And then I still have a land drop left. Maybe I should have just bottomed the counter spell after all and keep digging for more and more land, just set up a lethal finale. Sure. And we hit another land. Alright, so things are definitely going according to plan. Do I want to attack? Opponent could sacrifice Boromir, make the team indestructible, but I think Elrond can still get in there. Okay. That was a weird chum block. 
I guess there could be a sweeper incoming here for all I know. Although then they probably wouldn't have uh, jumped with both creatures when they can sank Boromir to make them indestructible. Samwise attacks. They'll certainly look like a board wipe is incoming. Just when we were having so much fun. Farewell even. Wow. Exiling our artifacts as well. That's the last card I would have expected in a Samwise deck. So have to send Galadriel back to the command zone. Not even in Graveyard where Uro could have exiled them to escape. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, for now we can deploy our artifacts and start crying again. So that was a huge setback. In case they were holding like a Swords to Plowshares as their last card, I might have wanted to play the artifacts first so I can scry in response to removal on Galadriel. Okay. So I can scry twice. Land on top. And scry again. At least now the final chapter won't be as devastating. And Galadriel isn't missing this game. So, already have enough mana for a very powerful finale. Samwise and Rosie reunited. Also pretty good alongside Mondrank, as you can imagine. So I have enough for finale x equals 10. Although I don't have a lot of creatures in play is the only issue. So we probably start with hideouts and then scry some more. We can also scry with Rivendell. Courtyard I can keep. can also draw with Maze Mind to him at this stage, which might be alright. So let's just play Uro. Castle can also help us cry. So we've got some options. Let's say I scry with Rivendell. See what's on top. Jace and Nyssa. Well, Nissa seems incredibly powerful on this board, so I should keep that one. Do I have the mana to draw it and play it? I think I'll be one short, sadly. But I think I should still keep both here. And then I can decline. And then the plan is to draw with uh, Maze Mind Tomb. And then next turn try and go off with uh, Nissa and Jace. There's Mondrank. So our opponent is now making a ton of food, which can also be used to return their historic permanence from the graveyard. Take six. And draw with Tomb. And then we know we're not drawing a land, so just draw for turn. And then I could still scry with map, want to make sure not to tap any forests here. I guess we'll start by playing Nissa, using as little green mana as possible. Okay, so that gives us a bunch more mana. Can draw with Maze Mind Tomb, or maybe scry first with map. Starfish I don't need. I guess it would be a random creature to get pumped by Finale. But we can just reveal more lands. Now we can also escape Uro. So let's do that. Plenty of fetch lands to choose from. River's Rebuke, okay, that's gonna be effective. Can I kill my opponents? Let's say we float all our mana, 
So this is x equals 10 finale. You can untap a forest. I think I'm one mana short of then also casting a river's rebuke. So that's a shame. I guess we'll just play Jace. Let's say we bounce same wise. I think I know what to do. Opponent with intervention to protect the team. Fair enough. Then I could still reverse rebuke here. Opponent can return a permanence, gets back Boromir. And then attack. And draw with Tomb. And then next turn finale is hopefully lethal. Time warp, okay, would have been useful information I guess had I drawn first. Because then we just time warp and set up the lethal finale. But I think we'll be just fine. Yeah, that was a brutal farewell, but uh, I think we'll be okay. So, float a bunch of mana. Untap with Nyssa. And then finally, 410. Should do the trick. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw here, facing Lagrella, and enter the battlefield deck typically. And our hand's not bad. Turn one Mystic, can set up turn two Galadriel. And we drew Patrick, which is also pretty nice if we get it going early. A couple ways for the ring to tempt us. Could just blow up Ornithopter with a Reclamation Sage. And then next turn, maybe play Galadriel and Birthday Escape in the same turn. Rejuvenator can ramp. So the 1 1's going to be annoying since even if we make Reclamation Sage or Ring Bear, they can block it. Counter spell. I don't think we need to keep up just yet. Although I could go Starfish keep up counter spell. Which isn't bad. Maybe it's worth a shot here. And an Ether Channeler. Yeah, that's annoying enough that I'm just gonna counter it here. Can draw a card when it enters, they can exile it with Lagrella, do some flicker shenanigans. So I'll wait on Starfish until after we play Galadriel. So we'll uh, start by maybe fetching. Play Galadriel. And then Birthday Escape. Could target Starfish actually, since it has zero power. And it does not have Defender, so it could attack if I wanted to. And then bottom everything except land. And reveal it. And then Starfish can Scry. Moldrifter gets to draw two. And looks like they have a flicker effect here at instant speed. The fairy's time twist. Alright, so our opponent gets to draw a lot of cards. We get to activate Starfish and keep that one on top. So we're ramping pretty nicely. We've got a finale in hand, which is going to be our finisher. Bouncing the opponent's creatures is not great when they all have some nice ETB effects, but it might be worth it still. Yeah, maybe I do actually want to attack with the Starfish, 
and get rid of like a fading hope. I want to fetch land. So yeah, let's cast horses. Bouncing two creatures. Nessa Steward of Elements could be another decent finisher. But that means needing to keep it on top and not getting any value from the scry. I think I still bought him. And then the ring tempts us. Starfish again. Hit a land, and there's a couple more lands coming up. Yeah, let's just keep the forests. Fetch with hideouts. Attack with a team. And then I get to draw and discard with Starfish instead of Scrying. Ditch Fading Hope. And then, are we setting up a lethal finale yet? Five, nine, ten mana, so we're still a little bit shy of x equals ten. Which is a goal. Meteor Golem takes out Galadriel. Ooh, with the one ring, that's nice. So let's start by playing Augur. Land on top, first play Galadriel. Get this cry, keep that one on top, put it in play. And then can uh, just scry with a starfish since I'm not attacking since my hand's great. Keep that on top, put it in play. We have Coven enabled as well with 0, 1, 2, 3. So we could cast creatures off the top. But for now we'll just uh, pass it back. And so now do we have finally X equals 10? Should be able to. Guardian project is fine, just need my opponent to tap out. Lagrella. Exiles. Golem and Galadriel. Opponent's got one blocker, so yeah, that should be plenty. So unless they've got a Pact of Negation, this should do it. Search for library, and what's the fanciest creature we can get? Green Warden, I guess works. And attack. That's the biggest starfish has ever gotten. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Gadwick, typically a mono blue counter spell deck. And our hand has potential if we get to resolve our spells. Can uh, hang on to Fabled Passage until after we play Nissa or Tatiova. And then a few lands to scry with Galadriel in play could be nice too. Beholds a turn late. So, could play my commander, and then next turn with Fabled Passage and Nissa we can make some extra mana. So, let's uh, go with the Grey Havens, I suppose. Reclamation Sage, I don't think I'll need. Galadriel surprisingly resolved. So yeah, I guess we'll give Nissa a try. Also resolves. Play Fabled Passage. Trigger Nissa. Now we can fetch. Opponent stifles or fetch land, wow. Fair enough. So, birthday escape on Nissa. Still get to scry. And uh, there's no lands here, so I think we bought them all three. Reveal, and we hit a land. So, we get to trigger Nissa after all. Take that, stifle. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems alright. No early ramp except for Uro on three. Up against a Smeagol, helpful guide. So, we're gonna wanna probably deploy Elrond and then Galadriel. Although, can expect the opponent to have some removal too. 
So maybe ram first with Uro, so we have enough mana to play both in the same turn. Could also play a Nissa, but needs to be for at least X equals 1. Yeah, let's play Uro and develop our mana. And there's Smeagol. And a Mystic. So what I could do now is play Bestiary, play Mystic and draw a card. Make it more likely we can hit our land drops. And that Mystic will also help us double spell. Nice cool, okay. Opponent tempts the ring. And Smeagol finds a command tower. Cry Augur of Autumn, probably to the top. So let's say I play Elrond, play Galadriel, and take it from there. Sure. Gonna decline. Land on top. And Mystic can be our ring bear. And then I can first reveal and then scry in this case, since we know there's a land. Scry again. Land on top. Okay, so that was a nice turn. And then we get to keep something on top. Um, Tireless Tracker wouldn't be bad with Hideout. Although I could just bottom everything so that if I scry with Best Cherry next turn, I get to maybe put another land in play. And we've got Krasis as card draw, so it's not like we're too desperate. And uh, also wanted to play my fetch land anyway, so everything's gonna get shuffled. So behold, no longer on top of our deck. We're just a skewed swarm away from uh, going off here. Casualties of war would be quite backbreaking too here. It's going to be an Entish Restoration, getting a couple of lands. Good combo with Smeagol. So our opponent's also developing their mana. And into the north. Okay, opponent's got pretty much the same amount of lands that we have. But now we get to put another one in play. And that's why playing such a high land count can be quite nice with Galadriel, so we're more likely to keep hitting lands. So, where do we continue here? We can play an Augur of Autumn, maybe play lands or creatures off the top, and sure, I'll pay the green. A bottom explore. Reveal. And there's another land that scries. Jace. Yeah, wouldn't be bad again. Can bounce Smeagol and maybe diversifies our threats a little bit, unless there's a Casualties of War next turn. But it's not land, so I feel like we can just get more value here. And there's a land. Another land on top. So if I Birthday Escape, we get to Scry again. And Mystic can be our Ring Bear. And then Castle Ventress on top. Do I want a Finale afterwards? Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. Can play Halfling, pay the green from Best Cherry to draw finally. And Reverse Rebuke, as good as it is, isn't actually amazing on this board. Now we can dig for more lanes. Okay, another Ring Bear. Let's keep it Elvish Mystic. And then now I want to first reveal and then scry, since there's land on top. Getting to see the top card of our library with cards like Augur of Autumn is also incredibly helpful. So, yeah, I don't mind the two lands here, since we'll be able to put one in play. And then another one with Best Cherry next turn. 
Could also play Nissa X equals one. Could attack with Elvish Mystic. All right, our opponent has seen enough. Too much value from Galadriel and friends. And yeah, I guess we could have gone for finale X equals three yet again to get Skewed Swarm and uh, break the game. So yeah, the deck has a ton of card selection with all this cry, puts a lot of lanes in play, and sooner or later we'll uh, find a win condition to close out the game, whether it's finale for X equals 10 or the upcoming Tooth and Nail from the Historic Anthology expansion, which can be entwined, maybe get a Hornet Queen and a Crater Hoof Behemoth to pump the team and kill them. So there's a lot of ways you can close out the game, but it's just important to have a high enough land count, plenty of scry effects, the scry lands have also proved to be incredibly valuable alongside Galadriel, and then a lot of landfall payoffs of course make sense in a deck putting this many lands on the battlefield. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.